greetings in Jesus, our friend, our savior, our high priest, our king. Everything that we do is, a, is about Jesus and for Jesus. Uh, today is, uh, I'll say in a minute, uh, a Marine with Jesus. And I'm uh, old school, as you can usually tell by the way my bride dresses me and there's no distractions or anything. I just, I like to, you know, speak what the Lord has on my heart. And today I'll, I'll be sticking to the notes so that I don't say anything that he doesn't want me to say and then uh, reveal what he does want me to reveal. As always, I, I'm so honored to be with you. And uh, if it's old school is I, I was raised, you know, if you don't like my apologies or to say please and thank you, I, I still open the car door for my bride. I pull out her chair. It's just that I was raised and, and it's to the point I'm not going to change. So if being polite and, and using those disturbs you, then, you know, perhaps you need to watch someone else. But as always, I, I welcome in the wisdom warriors that are so precious to me and so precious to the Lord and thousands of you that pray around the nation and pray across the world uh, for us. We are humbled. And uh, when the Lord said he's going to open up a platform, I had no idea what he was talking about. If he'd have told me how many, I probably would have stayed in the cave or hidden in the luggage. I, I really uh, I, I can speak before large groups in, in conferences and conventions, but it's it's not something I, I really uh, desire to do. I prefer to be behind the scenes, and that just fits for me. So today, please, as always, I'm so pleased. I'd say proud, but people take that wrong. Uh, but it is, if I got into the Greek to tell you, there is a word like that in Scripture. That means it, it's just so pleased, and that's what the Lord had said about Jesus. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, and if you remember at that time, he had done no miracles. And so we are so thankful for Jesus and the Father. But please be the Bereans. You're, I love, let me say this, and I've, tried to, I've got a lot to cover, so I won't continue. Um, I love the fact checkers, and I appreciate uh, when they point out to me uh, privately, when, when they send to me on the National War Council and other areas, that I fact checked this and I don't think that that was correct. And, and that had to do with uh, some of the things that were attributed to Kamala Harris in a public way. But many of those same things from a satire they had drawn that she had said in, in different speeches and in different places around the country. But I, I, I want to be fact checked and I want you to study the words and to make sure that what you're hearing is of scripture and of the Holy Spirit. So I am so thankful and so grateful for those that, that check and, and just don't take my word for it. But don't, it's the same way with other ministers. And if you hear a prophetic word someone gives, uh, sadly, people take mine and, and use the prophetic words and, and visions that I share and incorporate it into their own. And, you know, that really gets to my bride and, and Luke. But to me, I you know, that's between them and God. So today, as I said, I'm going to stick to... Um, the notes, it's Green Bottle and the Eagle Part 1, uh, Part 2, I believe. Uh, I gave Part 1, and I, unfortunately, I, I believe this is going to go into another, and you'll see why today. And, and the, the reason the Lord wants me to do this, I, I follow what he wants me to do and not what necessarily what I want to do or maybe what you want to hear, but I'll follow the sequence that he gives to me, and it will make, make sense. If you've seen from Babylon, the drums of war, and even the drag queen, there is a, uh, we, a weaving of, of, of a portrait that the Lord is showing from a prophetic standpoint for the United States and, and what our enemies are trying to do to us. And instead of one long uh, vision, he asked me to break that out, but they were given uh, July the, the 1st, and, and that uh, actually uh, ties in with this, uh, the green bottle. So, I'll get started. Last time I, I covered, uh, we are a covenant nation. Uh, we reviewed scripture, uh, Jewish tradition, and historical facts. Uh, I shared the three types of covenant in scripture, uh, the eight covenants that are different eight covenants that I showed you. Some people have less, some, some people may, may find more. Uh, the Abrahamic covenant, 
And then one of the key concepts that I had received from the Lord, he taught me, and I tried to, to give it to you the way he taught me, was um, from God's viewpoint on the seed and, and how it's passed down from generation to generation. And that was true with Adam, how sin passed down. And then with Abram, as he passed his seed down to the Levitical priesthood that I said had tied to Melchizedek at the time. So, and that was uh, Hebrews 7, verses 8 through 11. I want to read that again and get into what the Lord wanted me to share today. Although the Jewish priests received tithes, they all died. They were mortal. But Melchizedek, and like I said last time I pronounced that, I mean, spell that word for you, he lives on. It could even be said that Levi, the ancestor of every Jewish priest who received tithes, actually paid tithes to Melchizedek through Abram. And I, and I showed you that at that time, Abraham, uh, that that was generations later. So in the seed of Abraham passed down to the generations to the Levites, that seed that was in Abraham, the Lord looks at that as though it were a direct line and said they paid tithes. And I was surprised by that. And that's what the Lord was explaining to me in helping me to understand why sin passed down from Adam down to me and to my bride and, and my son and, and all of us that are born in the, in the natural. So when he paid those tithes to Melchizedek, that's what the Lord attributed to. He said, if any of the Levitical priests who served under the law had the power to bring us into perfection, they, they couldn't, they were moral, then why did God send Jesus, the Christ, the high priest after the order and likeness of Melchizedek. So he showed that to me and I wanted to, to teach that to you, but in a way that he had taught me that made sense. And you'll see today with the pictures, it was, it was a hard decision for me to do this or the monitor. Uh, but I, I like this, this intimacy that I, that I feel with you in, in this setting versus when I stand and I'll be at the monitor. Um, it says in the footnotes, and that was from the Passion, in effect, Abraham submitted all his sons to the priest of Melchizedek because it said Levi was in the loins of his father, Abraham. So from there, I, I covered the deceit of the Gibeonites, how they deceived uh, Israel and, and went into covenant with them. What Christopher Columbus said about the coming to America, the Holy Spirit, in 1492, and I gave the five founding principles then made America great, the great eagle, as the Lord uh, refers to him when he talks to me about it. I'm going to cover this, and I, it was probably on, a, on another broadcast uh, when I did this or a different teaching. And I'll say this, the Lord, uh, people look and, and say, why did not Trump go in uh, with, he won by probably the largest margin in history, and those that monitor me and check on me. That's, that's my opinion. The Lord had given me the vision of the avalanche. He gave me the, the vision of Humpty Dumpty and of Medusa all before the election. If we had not, if he had gone in and things continued, many of the things that we see today that are disgusting would not be, would not be evident to us. These people were in the shadows and hiding and since that time, they've come out, and we see what happened in the first seven months, and that seven months was in another pro prophecy of this series that the Lord had shown to me. So going back to prophecy of 2020, the Lord had given me, and it was not the worst, but it was one of those. It's called the Boil of Pedophilia, and I I'm going to read this. Drain an abscess or boil. Excess drainage is usually a safe and effective way of treating a bacterial infection of the skin. A doctor will numb the area around the abscess, make a small incision, and allow the pus inside to drain. This, and sometimes a course of antibiotics, is really all that's involved. If he follows your doctor advice at home treatment, the abscess should heal with little scarring and little chance of recurrence. So in that, and he showed me at that time a carbuncle, which is a cluster of boils that he actually in a sword lanced the entire thing 
And when I showed that, I had this picture of a boil cluster, cluster of boils, carbuncle. And this thing was just severed, this whole thing. And he said, uh, when something gets infected like that, this what happened to be boils he showed me, but there are other things that you could lose a limb over. And instead of losing a limb or appendage of some type that he said, I, I have to cut that. And when it drained and it was in the spirit that he had shown this to me, you can smell in the spirit and you actually, there's a, all your five senses are heightened and to see it, but it was so disgusting and revolting that it, it just made me sick. And especially the scenes that he showed me having to do with this. Some of you may remember it, it had to do with like treehouse looking things and some on the ground where they were doing unimaginable things with children. So he said that, and I wanted to take a reference that he gave to me from scripture and share that with you on, if you don't deal with an issue now, it can come back to hurt you later. The, it said, it, if you deal with this boil now, then the reoccurrence of it later is, is minimized. It doesn't mean it won't, but it's more minimized once you take care of it, if you address it. So I want you to read this. It's, uh, and I wrote, these are my notes from Saul and Agag to Mordecai and Haman to modern times. This is to you, I wrote it actually. Many of the family are familiar with the biblical account of King Saul being told by the prophet Samuel to kill all the Amalekites and their livestock, 1 Samuel 15. If you remember the Amalekites, it's an interesting story and that's the area I deviate. When Joshua was fighting the Amalekites, the Amalekites were giants, descendants of the Nephilim. There's that word uh, that I butcher all the time, Nephilim. Nephilim. Uh, Nephilim is what my friend in Arizona says, the, the way to pronounce it, Nephilim. They were giants. And in that instance, it's funny because people talk about God's mercy and his grace, and he is all of those things. But in this instance, Joshua asked, he said, I need, it was almost getting towards evening, afternoon, late afternoon. He said, I need more daylight to keep killing these giants. And so the Lord gave him another half a day so that the, the sun stopped where it was and Joshua was able to, to kill these Amalekites as they fled. And I thought it was ironic as how many people are, are gonna ask the father to, to extend a half a day so they keep, keep killing people. But these were enemies of Israel and God wanted them destroyed, but they weren't all destroyed as we see uh, that was the, uh, the Amalekites. So Samuel had told King Saul, he said, I want you to kill these Amalekites and I want you to everything, men, women, children, sheep, any livestock, all of it dead. But Saul refused to do so, and he spared the Amalekite king and much of the livestock. The Amalekite king, his name was King Agag, A-G-A-G, -G, was eventually killed by Samuel. Once he confronted Saul and saw that he had done it, he went over and plunged a sword into him and killed him and said, the Lord told you to, to kill all of them because he could see the future and what could happen. But Saul, Saul didn't. Since King Saul spared King Agag, it is believed that Saul probably spared not just Agag, but other members of the Amalekite royal house or allowed them to escape. If you look and go Google the Jewish library, it says that he had impregnated his wife. She was pregnant at this time, King Agag's wife, and she escaped. This is where we get the admonishment, by the way. Does the Lord have as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to pay attention is better than the fat of rams. And from my Bereans, you may write that down, 1 Samuel 5, 22. We hear that often today. It's better to obey than it is to offer a sacrifice and be in disobedience. So the disobedience is ironic. That disobedience of King Saul and his tribe stripped him not only of the, of the kingship, but his tribe of the kingship. And we know that from David then with the tribe of Judah, 
And that's where Jesus, his lineage comes from, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So he was disobedient. And centuries later, and, and I'll give you the time on that, Esther, uh, the house of Saul and Agag interact again. So that many centuries later, Mordecai, Mordecai, sorry, Mordecai and Esther were relatives, and they both descended from the tribe of Benjamin. What is fascinating is they were descended from Kish, the father of King Saul of Israel, who spared Agag, Esther 2, 4, 6, and compare that to 1 Samuel 9, 1. Haman, the advisor to the Persian king, and we know the story that Saul and Agag lived in the 11th century and in the 5th century BC is when this occurred. So centuries later, this came up. And his failure to kill the Amalekite king came back with Haman, who was number two in the kingdom at that time. And he desired, he had a hatred from his lineage for the Jews. So he had devised, and we get Purim per 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 from that day, <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, is he convinced the king to let him kill all of them, not knowing that Esther was Jewish and Mordecai was Jewish. Six centuries later, the descendant of Agag convinced the Persian king to issue a proclamation against the lives of Jews in the Persian Empire. So the point, and I'll, I'll, let me finish this last sentence. This is a classic example of things going wrong many centuries in the future when God's laws are not initially obeyed. And I want you to pay attention to this, those that study. For those who study history, there is distinct possibility this ancient enmity, right, the Persian Empire, continues today. And we know who that camel was in that vision they had given to me. So centuries later, by not obeying the Lord, that lineage came back to try and kill the Jews. The Lord is, has been telling me that if we do not address the issues now with the church and with in the secular realm, they're going to fester and get worse as that boil. And he and his loving kindness and his mercy is allowing some of these things to happen so that these issues can be addressed. And that's where I will show you as we go through. So if you have a chance, please study that because it's important, not only in history, but you wonder why God has not given up on America. I believe that I have shown, and this is my belief, from what he taught me, that we are a covenant nation. And others that don't believe that, I appreciate and respect your opinion. Mine is that the United States of America, the great eagle that he refers to them when he speaks to me, is a covenant nation with the Lord. And I showed you the different types of covenant between men and men and with the Gibeonites when he honored that. And he punished David and his kingdom because Saul had violated that. Let me move forward now and I'll go to the see, PowerPoint slides. And let me do this one first if I can. Eagle in a tree, the great eagle. I received this from one of the ladies that follow us, Shelly T. I'll give her last name. But I do look at these, and I do appreciate them. And they know that I love eagles. And she says that there is a eagle in the tree, and there are two young ones in the tree. And Shelly, I couldn't find the young ones, but I saw the eagle in the tree, and it was just a beautiful picture. I'm going to read so that you know there is a vision of the green bottle. The first part of that vision, and then get into what the Lord wanted me to share today to kind of wrap things up. And then I'll finish out with a vision next week. This is the vision of the green bottle, just the first part. And I'll show you three pictures that go with that. 
the vision was July 1st, 2021. And it's ironic that it's right at the time of the 4th of July. And this is, he was still speaking to me about this vision several days later. This was a Thursday night into Friday. This is one of those nights that usually happen a couple of times a month that when I go to my private time in 11, Kimberly goes to bed early because she gets up at 5.30. That's usually at night when my night begins. This is one of those nights I, I went to my private time at 11 and I was still awake when she got up at 5.30. I'm thankful they don't happen as often as they used to. So it's down to a few times a month. The Lord was standing next to me on a long pier looking out over the ocean. And I said, you can smell, you can taste, you can hear, you can see, you can even feel all your senses when you're in the spirit are heightened beyond what you can imagine. It was windy and I could smell the salt in the air. He softly asked, do you know where we are? Knowing I did not, he said, the beaches of Normandy where so much blood was shed for the cause of freedom. When he spoke that to me, that's one of the, the, the lines I wanted to make sure I got it right. I got up out of bed, went into the room where one of my friends has provided a little notepad and I wrote in the notepad. So I get these words exactly right. The beaches of Normandy where so much blood was shed for the cause of freedom. There is always a purpose when he speaks to me in a vision. So I waited after 45 years and the last 20 years of this, I, I just know we, we, it's like a, I don't want to say a husband and wife, uh, but it is kind of like that. I mean, I just know him now. So I waited, remaining silent. Looking over the water, I noticed something floating on the surface. Out, looking out over the water. As it approached the pier, I could see something green as it drifted toward the shore. I could see it bobbing up and down in the water as it, the crest. And I kind of like, okay, that's interesting. Walking back down the pier and towards the beach, I could see a green bottle had washed ashore. As it floated with the ebb and flow of the tide, in and out, it's not much, maybe a half a foot or so. I observed closely and moved it around with my foot. I didn't know what it was. I didn't want to touch it till I looked at it. And I moved it around my foot. That's harmless it looks. Believing, believing it was not harmful, I bent down and picked it up. And I looked at it. It was a very old green bottle with some type of stuffing down the neck and a gummy substance which sealed the top. The bottle on the inside looked dry with something that looked like a parchment. He, being the Lord, said, open it, for it contains a message for the eagle. And I'll continue that the next time but to, to let you know that there is a green bottle, and that message that is in that bottle is for the great eagle, and it's for this time, and it's a message of hope, and it's, it's a good message. I'm going to now wrap this other part up. It's going to take a little while, and there's some things that I'm going to read, so pen and pencil or pen, whatever you have. I have a question and it was this week during my private time knowing what's going on in Afghanistan. And I showed you Afghanistan and why it's important. And uh, the, and this is a fact, the heroin and the co cocaine and the money that comes out of that, they count by the real car. It's so much money that they make from that. So my question during the week was, will the Taliban get nuclear weapons? I showed you all those nations around them. I show you who's affiliated. And I told you who had nuclear weapons, how many warheads they had, how many they want in the future. So think of what was shared and why the boneyard of empires is important. This is what I'm going to address today. This is from my study, uh, The Darkness of Structure. I have told you, or, or some of you may recall, in the past, uh, th maybe three or four years ago, the Lord 
no, it was longer than that, probably five years ago. The Lord had told me that he's going to show me the structure of heaven. And with that, I was able to visit several times and he showed me different things. And then afterwards he said, I also want to show you the darkness. And I didn't really want to do that at all, but you, know, you do what the Lord wants you to do. So um, you can see this, this is the structured church. This is the small remnant within the ecclesia, the ecclesia. And this is the establishment, structural establishment has made its way into the church. This is still some of the denominations that are out there that are moving towards this. And that one world government thing. And then this, this is the remnant. And I'm going to be talking about this piece and this piece, but more of this piece. This is the deep state, the dark state. This is the satanic bloodlines and the um, evil and the families that are associated with that, with that um, all seeing eye thing. We talked about in this series, the tree and what it represented. By now, most of you understand uh, many of the individuals the Lord revealed in both the deep and dark state. And I'll show this to you again. You'll remember this one. This was the character in the casket, the ones that followed. This is the dark state. And I did not give you names on that one. One is a statesman that speaks with a funny accent. Next to him was a media mogul and their protege that they had inducted into this. And their protege, as I said before, is a mole that was in the White House. And most of you know who that is, mole that was in the White House. I'm surprised that last, I think it was last week, no one had, had asked me about it. And I had mentioned there was a bowl of rice in the White House and no one caught that or, or asked me about it. So not that I would have answered you, but no one, no one asked me about the bowl of rice in the White House that is... Uh, control of this character and, and, and this one. This was, and I'll get a little bit more into it today, the corporate media and some of the shenanigans they're pulling. This was all the congressional stuff. And I'll show you a little bit of that. This was the ones that were taking uh, an ax to try and destroy this tree that had all the flags on it that represented America. So if you have seen that one. The tree and what it represented by now most understand. Ashlyn, I had sent out, my bride did for me and she is so good. She's, I, I love her more than ever. And Luke, Ashlyn, the demonic characters trying to kill the lion and actually in this area kill the lion. And I said, the eagle didn't die. He just showed me, excuse me, that picture so that I really didn't have to get into describing these demonic things. Uh, I never liked doing that. And some people maybe don't even believe that, but that's okay. I, I know what's in the spirit and what's not. But let me also go back to this one and I'll pull it out of my drawer. It's not this one, so I'll show you on the next one. That was this. I didn't want to, and I provided that you, you, you are, I didn't, you can see all these demonic characters that will, with this witch, this would be the leading Nephilim of the 13 satanic bloodlines. Nephilim, yes, today. That's another study I do, but all of these different looking characters. Ashland bound, shaved, and humiliated before death. That applies to the ego, except for the death. He's wounded, as the Lord has shown me on Mount Rushmore, weakened, but not dead. Where Ashland rose from the dead because he is the son of God. 
I wonder. And I had also shown you the Trojan horse. So let me get to this first. I showed you there was a Trojan horse in New York. You can see different locations of it, different articles it publishes. Talk about the Trojan horse in New York that the Lord had shown me in this one when they all converged. The Trojan horse in New York. This is their assembly. This is the blue helmets, and this is actually a picture of a Chinese. I don't know if it's a battalion or not that, that was working under the auspices of that organization. This is the dark state. I show you this character, Medusa. These were kingsmen, all the king's horses and all the king's men. This Roman thing was out of Washington, D.C., the Roman Empire emerging again. And then everything of this was at Mount Rushmore where that eagle was, or he is, not at the White House. So that was to cover that. I had shown you um, the dragon, the dragon, <laughs> the drag queen. I should say dragon, that's about what it is. The drag queen and the serpent, We I explained and, and showed you details of it was a cult. And I hopefully I showed you from their own website, their own publications, and people want to dismiss that. It's kind of hard to go to someone's website and see their own publications that verify what you're speaking about. So when I was first shown that in, in the vision, the drag queen, I actually thought it was someone else because I'd seen that in the structure of darkness. The structure of darkness uh, is in the different realms of the nine realms uh, of the neither region. It, it, it's into the second heaven, but on, on the earth, all that is, is, is together how he has uh, puppets. But I thought it was different because if you would take a note down, Revelation 19, 2 through 5. The whore of Babylon, which I will refer to as the harlot that rides the beast of Revelation. <clears throat> the predictions in Revelation 17 and 18, they constitute, talking about this harlot, the, the vision two chapters constitutes the longest vision in the New Testament, the prophetic vision in the New Testament. So when the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, devotes that much time to something, you can usually circle it, put a star asterisk next to it, because it's pretty important. This is a picture I had of that. You see my notes up here that are crossed out. Revelation, this is the picture. When he showed that to me and I wrote notes and I will, these I'm probably going to, to read a, a lot of and I'll cover these four things, four explosions, a hideous looking sculpture thing, the ninth circuit cult, and then the bank, which I'll cover. I want to try to cover this up so you can see how hideous this is before I reveal it to you. The whole page is full of this thing, but I'll show it to you in a minute. But I want you to get a good look at that sculpture. 
and I will describe it. <clears throat> I guess let me show you the picture first and then you'll have an idea. If you're thinking, where is this? You know, I want you to think about ahead of time. And then once I show this to you, say, what were you thinking and where would this be? This is an actual picture, by the way. The Lord has shown me in, in this vision, this, these characters here as black pigeons, this one and others as white pigeons, several hundred of them. And I'll explain that and move forward. When he showed that to me in the vision and I didn't put it in this, I asked him why pigeons, Lord, because I saw black pigeons. I didn't know what he was talking about and white pigeons. I said, what is that? And he said, and it brought back once he told me something that Luke and I had seen. And when I told him, he, we both said, yeah, that makes sense. You know, and I always say, God is so smart. He, he really is. He's something. Pigeons can communicate. He used to be carrier pigeons in, in the old days. And I think maybe some people still do that as a hobby. I'm not for sure. If you ever have watched the movie Wick with my son, I've watched all the movies with him that I that are right movies. Uh, ones that I'm approved to watch. Usually the Lord will show me stuff out of all these movies from Hollywood, what they're trying to, to get across. But there's no IP address, there's no hacking. There's no tracing. So a lot of their communication is, is done and not only encrypted, but in, in such a way that they communicate, uh, as he told me, like carrier pigeons, that you, you cannot hack it, you cannot trace it. There's no IP address. So they communicate that group in, in a way that is kept confidential. So I will now read their explanation of what this was and, and where it was at. 20 meter wide, 22 yards, brass and bronze sculpture is located in the Vatican's audience hall. I guess that's Paul VI, which was completed in 1971. The official Vatican explanation of this horrifying, evil appearing sculpture, supposedly in the works of, and I'll spell his name, P E R I C L E. His last name, F-A-Z-Z-I-N-I, -I, is that La Région, Re Resurrection, depicts 20th century mankind living under the threat of nuclear war and Jesus rising from a nuclear crater in the Garden of Gethsemane. Many questions why the sculpture does not bear the name of Christ or why does it bear such a bizarre alien resemblance to a demonic satanic image yeah is why why would it be in the vatican he wanted me to cover this particular group before we moved on my bride had posted for me another movie ratatouille and it's interesting when i'm watching the movie how he'll speak to me or they tell me, you remember that, that you watched, go back and watch it again. And so in Ratatouille, and I apologize for the pictures because these are pretty dark. This uh, older lady, I don't, I don't have a picture of her, but this older lady was surprised she found rats. And then she started shooting into the ceiling. And when he showed this to me, I heard four distinct explosions that were in this particular place of the seven mountains and the ceiling represented the top echelon, the very top that, and I'll let some of these pictures speak. And then I'll quote a couple things for those that monitor and check everything I say, but you can see this on Ratatouille, but the four explosions I heard were uh, in the upper echelon of this particular city uh, with seven mountains and I put four pictures down 
hidden rats. They've all been hidden for a while. Fling rats. You can see these. Well, you really can't see that, but they headed straight for the sewer. And they had the, the rats were of different types, varying rats. So it it made up for the different varieties that are within this organization, different uh, priesthood that are within this organization. And they were hidden. There were different ones. This explosion, they're fleeing rats, and then they headed straight for the sewage, which was indicative. This I'm going to show you and then read it so that you understand. I'm going to quote this. This is not my words. I'm quoting these words so that you see this. I'm going to spell several of these names into my thousands of Catholic friends. This is, this is what I'm sharing of the Lord, and I'm going to quote this uh, and let you know. These are not my words, but when the Lord shows me these things, I stand 100% behind them. So this is quoting Jesuit Superior General, and here is his, I'll spell his whole name, Adolfo, A-D-O-L-F-O, -O, Nicholas, N I C. O-L-A-S, Pachon, I guess, is his last name, P-A-C-H-O-N. Jesuit Superior General. He's also known as the Black Pope and addressed as the Father General. The Black Pope, like the White Pope, is appointed for life. He announced suddenly this week that he will resign from his office at the next General Congress of the Jesuits, October 3rd, 2016. This gentleman's last name, P-A-C-H-O-N, is the third top Vatican official to resign while in office after being prosecuted by the ICLJC, that is the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels, for crimes against humanity Former Pope Benedict, Joseph, and I'll spell his last name, R-A-T-Z-I-N-G-E-R, -E Joseph Ratzinger, abdicated on February 11, 2013, barely two weeks before the ICLJC jury found him guilty of complicity, complicity. C O M P L I C I T Y, <laughs> English, complicity in child trafficking and murder. Another primary defendant in the same case, Vatican Secretary of State, his first name, T A R C I S I O, Bertone, B E R T O N E, also resigned after the verdict. Similarly, in a criminal lawsuit being conducted by the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels that commenced, it started on April 7th, 2014. <clears throat> Several eyewitnesses who have given their deposition to the court claim they witnessed Pachon, P-A-C-H-O-N, <clears throat> participate in child rape and sacrifice rituals connected to the notorious Jesuit run Ninth Circuit Satanic Cult during 2009 and 2010. And it talks about who was elected next to lead the largest Catholic male religious order. So not my words, the quote. So for my Bereans and others, Google and check. This is about the Catholic Church and complicity in child trafficking and murder. And this had to do with child sacrifice in the bowels of the Vatican.
the Ninth Circle cult. This belief is identical to standard witchcraft. It says this, and I don't believe this. It, they have an exception. I believe they are just as involved as any in the witchcraft, but listen to, to this. The only significant difference is that the witch has to be very careful about bringing the demon into this dimension because the demon is going to materialize cursing, spitting, and fighting, whereas Jesus is pictured as coming into our realm in a loving manner. In fact, the witch has to be carefully prepared in a nine-foot circle on the ground. And the witch must be very careful not to step outside the circle, nor allow any of the members of the coven to do so. If anyone steps outside the circle, they step outside their protection and will suffer instant death at the hands of the demon. It says the only reason Catholic priests do not have to stay inside the circle is because this is a symbolic, whereas witchcraft is the actual thing. <laughs> really. So this is, or the Jesuits, this is one of their groups. Google the Ninth Circuit. You can see all the information on that. Last of this one, I could have gone on and on. I said, Lord, I just... <laughs> Pretty in it. Institute for the Works of Religion. Institute for the Works of Religion, also known as the Vatican Bank. In order to clean up the bank, often implicated in corruption and money laundering scandals, Pope Francis announced a revolution within the institution and created a new committee. On financial security, 2014, he became Pope in 2013, and a year later he is, 2014, says that he formed this committee on financial security. He also recently sacked the entire board of the Vatican Financial Information Authority, the FIA, and replaced old members with international experts. I'm sure he did. The... Vatican is, I wrote, and these are some of the things I researched, it's not millions in, in the, the Vatican Bank, there's billions. And it said that they, this restructure cost them millions of dollars as though it was really a, some great thing. And they have billions in it. That's not even including the gold that they have uh, there in storage and an un, un, unimaginable treasure in art, ancient transcripts, and secret doc, documents dating back to the Inquisition, the World Wars, the Nazis, and all that. So um, Vatican Bank, this is where some of the explosions are gonna come. And it says, this says he did that because of corruption and money, money laundering. Money laundering. Remember Afghanistan? Acronym agencies. Oh. What I did not cover the last time I, I covered the drag queen, and now we've covered this. And I do that in love. I don't do it in any malice or any hatred. I simply look at the facts. It's if I say the sun is coming up, I didn't make it up. I just point out a fact. It breaks my heart over it because I know so many people that are part of that organization, but they're not guilty of all these things. I could have gone into others and I have it down. Um, secret societies, part of the structure of darkness. And I had talked in the past about the Bohemian Grove and the Owl, and I pointed out on the dollar bill and um, the Bilderberg Group. And I believe maybe a, eight months ago, a year, I had 
mentioned briefly in one of my broadcasts that I had been invited to join a particular secret society, not only once, but twice. And I did not meet <laughs> by far the minimum threshold of being worth four or five million. I think that's when we were going uh, just these last seven years of the lean years where we lost everything. So I certainly didn't, uh, wasn't qualified for reasons that would be obvious. I know why, but so here's another. You can, this is another one. So if you are a, one of these, if you're of that drag queen cult or uh, the one that I just showed, you are very high up candidate for that organization. And this one, and I'm going to read this again, those that monitor, I'm quoting an article by Joseph B-O-T-T-U-M. And please don't write me about apologize for quoting or pointing it out. You don't know how many people watch me and observe me and censor and all those other things. So keep it to yourself. I just, I, you wear me out with that. Um, I'm going to read this though. His quote, quoting, woke anti-racism certainly appears to have taken on the trapping of religion. White people have been seen washing the feet of black people and asking for forgiveness, a ritual firmly in line with the Christian tradition. And terms like white guilt and white privilege are treated much as original sin used to be, things for which humanity must forever atone. If you don't believe there's a woke movement, then that's okay. This is woke protest. This is out of hand woke protest. These woke people says in the background, animals were here first, not us. They have more of a right to the planet than humans. That's this group. And then our esteemed leaders in Democrat congressional group, House members, Senate members, moving that woke, trying to divide us. All of this comes from Rules for Radicals, Saul Alinsky. You may want to look at that, the different principles. Everything you see today goes right down the line, Saul Alinsky, Rules for Radicals. Look it up. And I'm getting close to the end for today. This one is very sad. This is what my bride posted. I was a Boy Scout. Luke was a Boy Scout. For generations, it was an American tradition uh, to be a Cub Scout and a Boy Scout. I think my bride was a brownie and then a girl scout. So they, they also, and I remember going to jamborees and camping out. They've been compromised. An American tradition. On history since 1910. They removed just all the statues and headquarters for the Boy Scouts is here in Dallas. This is them in a parade. This particular flag. Camping is racist. 
the, I'll quote this, Boy Scouts in American condition, same with the Girl Scouts, they received a half a million dollars, 500,000 from the Ford Foundation to study racism among their group. $500,000 to study racism. And now we know that boys can become Girl Scouts and Girl Scouts can become Boy Scouts. They introduced Scout masters that were gay, transgender. So they have took to an American tradition. I have, by the Holy Spirit, shown you Babylon. Drums of War, the Drag Queen, and I added one other religion to it and showed you not only the tree where the skeleton and Humpty Dumpty and the Trojan Horror, all those were trying to destroy America, and I had shared with you what the Goody did in Ur of the Chaldees and the compromise that the priest had made that advised the king. I don't want you to take these one at a time. I want you to take them in a series and see what the Lord is saying. If you don't want to take your time and, and study it, it's okay. I got it. But I'm sharing with those that the Holy Spirit has brought to us to share and to teach. I don't want just to give you a vision or prophetic word and leave it at that. I desire to teach more than I desire to share those things. But I will because the Lord wants them shared and he wants you to see what we're facing today. So I will finish up with three more slides, pray, and then say goodbye to the next time. The journey of restoration, I said it began on August 20th, or the Lord did, and he pointed that out in a previous broadcast. And August 20th made seven months, and at that time, he equated it to the seven years of Nebuchadnezzar when he went and was like an animal out in the fields, long claws and hair, and I, I told you what that individual's face looked like. The restoration of America, August 20th. That has nothing to do with God giving up on us. We're a covenant nation, and he wanted me to take the time to show, uh, both scripturally and historically, that we are a covenant nation. I had shown you this, and it broke my heart being a, having served in the military, and many of you know, Gold Star family, that when I saw this eagle on Mount Rushmore, it was during a storm and it was wounded and it was very weak. And it was the same when Ashland that laying on that slab with all that demonic stuff, not to say that the eagle had died, but that he was wounded and all this demonic activity was around it. The Lord willing on Thursday, I'll share the green bottle, what was written on that parchment. Get to that in just a second. But I want to read this to you. This is what the Lord had shown. And this was part of the URL. And if you don't like my pictures, I'm just keep it to yourself. Don't post on my post. The Son of Righteousness will dawn. Malachi 4, 2 through 3. Count on it, quoting. The day is coming, raging like a force fire. All the arrogant people who do evil things will be burned up like stove wood. Burnt to a crisp. Nothing left but scorched earth and ash. A black day. But for you, 
the remnant, those that have been faithful, like in Revelation Church of Philadelphia. But for you, and I would add to that, this, I don't add to scriptures, but in my heart, say, you know, those that are precious. And so loving, he loves all of us. But for you, sunrise, the sun of righteousness. Scripture has S-U-N. I also think in my heart, S-O-N. Will dawn all those who honor my name. Healing, radiating from its wings. You will be bursting with energy. Like colts frisky and frolicking. And you'll stomp on the wicked. There'll be nothing but ashes under your feet on that day. God of the angel armies says so. That's to you, my family, my friends, those that love Jesus. But it's also an invitation to those who don't know. Malachi, Malachi 4, 2 and 3. He's coming. Before he does, he's going to make sure his bride is not beaten and battered and wounded. And that the ball of pedophilia and the ball of so many things within the natural realm. And believe me, it's in the church too. It's cleaned up. God will make sure the eagle soars again. So for next week, he took me back to Normandy and reminded me of the blood and the cost of so many lives. Land of the free and home of the brave. The green bottle that washed ashore. There was a document inside. And I'll read to you what was on the document. And then what the Lord had to say about the United States of America, the great eagle, his bride that he loves with all his heart, that he has heard our cries. This past week, Kimberly and I basically shut off the phones and fasted and prayed the entire week for this nation and people on our prayer table and for others. I had a friend that went on the glory this past week and we prayed for comfort for this family. Dear Father, thank you so much. Words are never not enough. Words will never be enough to explain your son, Jesus, the glory, the majesty. Also, the gentleness, the compassion that he has. And he showed us as we read the New Testament, but it's today as well. He's the same yesterday as he is today. The love, the compassion, the mercy. Touch your people. Farmers, ranchers, first responders, our military. Those that are still, there's thousands who are still trapped in Afghanistan that Humpty Dumpty and others want to put out a different narrative for she told me to pray for them. Pray for them. I pray for this family that you have drawn to us. I'm so thankful, Lord, for those that subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook that we're overwhelmed with it, Lord. And we have a great responsibility to, to be discreet, to be confidential, and to love. Help me to esteem others more highly than myself. And Father, please help me to walk in true humility and meekness and stay the path and the course that you've set for me and for my family. We love you with all our heart. 
bless, bless, bless this great nation that was founded. To spread the gospel around the world so that they may know Jesus. Bless the great evil. Thank you, Father. I appreciate your time. Thank you. The Lord willing, on Thursday, I'll see you and we'll wrap this up. Meanwhile, God bless each of you, wisdom warriors, your family members, and, and God bless the United States of America. Until next time, thank you.